Hello, my name is Dejan Boschkov, Grandmaster from Bulgaria. In this video, I'm going to show you typical ways of attacking the castle king. The fact that the king has castle doesn't necessarily mean that it was brought into safety. In fact, we can still attack it there and we have two typical plans. One is the pawn storm, which is clearing the road foul with pieces. And we are trying to open files, diagonals for them so that they can attack from far away and eventually bring them closer and deliver checkmate. This is something that we are going to see in the future as well. And the other one, the other typical plan is the pure peace attack. Sometimes we are mixing the two, but the pure peace attack is usually happening if we have two conditions. If the opponent's king is weak, if there are weaknesses, and usually all those pawn moves like g6, which is opening the road for the black pieces to be under attack or each six which is weakening the light squares etc all of these they can help us in the attack one important condition for our attack to be successful is the number of the pieces in the attack and in the defense if we have more attackers than defenders then the chance of successful attack is much higher otherwise it usually doesn't work let me show you what i mean with this game Miroshnichenko playing with the white pieces against Krasenkov from the Antalya tournament in 2004. It started slowly with the move knight f3, c5, g3, knight c6, bishop g2, g6, and uh, this is quite a flexible approach by the Ukrainian grandmaster who plays with the white pieces. He can choose any setup. He decided to choose the king's Indian setup, and this is like a reverse king's Indian defense. As you can see, the white pawns arrange in a typical way for the king's indian defense and the white pieces as well which doesn't necessarily mean that he doesn't want to go for the attack in the best possible moment black chose a novelty back in 2004 the move e5 was a novelty by the prominent polish grandmaster krasenkov is a very aggressive player and he wanted to take a good care of the center and he wanted to take over the initiative in this game to which white replied b4 he is not giving up the fight for the center, he is attacking the pawn on c5 and basically he would be happy to see this capture as after that he is going to have more pawns in that side of the board. Now probably the best move for black here was to do something like d6 which is going to defend the center. The center is going to be quite stable and nobody can really attack easily but he kept on playing in a risky uh, way and he went for e4 trying to open the diagonal for his bishop and indeed he succeeded in doing so but we shouldn't forget that black is playing a tempo down he is playing with the black pieces after all and he has to be more careful when he is going for material like he did in this situation so having said that then we will perfectly understand why the move queen d5 which is fighting for the initiative by white is the right thing to do Here's Temporarily sacrificing a pawn, but he is bringing the queen on a very strong position from where it is attacking obviously the knight, the pawn on c5, but it is also supporting the bishop on its way out, and eventually this bishop is going to join the attack as we are about to see it. White's idea is that after knight takes c3, which has to be played more or less, he can capture on c3 himself, and even though he is temporarily sacrificing a pawn, he wins one important tempo to develop his bishop on g5. Now he has almost all his pieces out. His rook is coming out next with rook c1 eventually, or maybe he can do something else. We're about to see this in a moment. And he is having nice lead in development at the moment. These two pieces, they're out of the game, which means that they'll be out of the king's side in case that something wrong happens there and in case that White starts attacking on this side of the board. Now, it should be noted that the move f6 is impossible because of the spin, so he cannot defend with tempos. The other defense is to drop the bishop back with bishop f6. But this is quite a gloomy defense, as white can simply capture on c5 immediately with the pawn, or even after the trade on f6, he can capture on c5, and he's going to have a free advantage basically for nothing. He has strong Catalan bishop, which is exerting pressure on this diagonal, and he has strong play on the half open C and D files. Thanks to the lead and development, he is going to occupy them, while black has a problem with the isolated and weak pawn on D7. So, this is a very big advantage for white. And 
that's quite understandable why Krasenkov didn't go for that one, but he chose instead of that queen to e8. Now, if a move like rook c1, he can first take and then bring the bishop back home to defend his king's side. So he's going to have at least a pawn for his sufferings and for his a lack of development. But white is not that much interested into the material. On the contrary, he thinks this way. Okay, my opponent's pieces are quite weak. His king is actually also a potential target because he doesn't have pieces on the king's side. Or, if he has pieces on the king's side, they're uh, not quite well designed to defend the dark squares. And for that reason, it makes sense for me to sacrifice the exchange to give a bite to my opponent, but to get rid of the key defender, this bishop. Because this bishop is the key defender indeed of the dark squares. And that's why he sacrifices the exchange with the queen c5. He doesn't stop mounting pressure, he keeps on pressurizing his opponent, and now he forces more or less the capture on a1, because if black retreats with the bishop, let's say bishop g7, he can play rook c1 or rook d1, he's going to have large advantage pretty much for nothing. And bishop a1 is one of those moves that you don't want to play, but you're forced to, because otherwise you would be suffering strategically for nothing. Now at least black is hoping that he can survive this attack and eventually convert the extra exchange. The problem is though that he indeed doesn't have any defenders on the dark squares. Maybe now it made sense for him to try and to lock them down with a move like f6, although this would have weakened the light squares in return, and I guess this is the reason why he didn't play it, because he chose the move queen to e6. Now queen to e6 was answered rook d1, and again, let me show you one more time that all the white pieces are out. In a situation like that, hunting more material with the black pieces, this move was also possible on the previous one, and it was also a mistake by the way, is usually a very bad idea for the defender. He is opening files for the opponent, even though these files are in the center and seemingly irrelevant for the king's side attack, this is not quite true. White can use them to penetrate into the opponent's camp. Now in particular if the queen retreats to some bad square like d3, black is getting checkmated immediately. Check, sacrifice for queen, followed by another check, the king is forced to go on g8 and finally checkmate on the back rank. Usually the attack is conducted on the color of the squares which have been weakened, and in that case those were the dark squares. Uh, so, okay, the final blow is on a light square, but it doesn't matter, it's a back rank checkmate. After rook e1, black can try to defend with a move like queen to b2. But then, a good move is the one which Ftashnik suggested, queen to d6. The meat that we have seen from before is no longer working because on bishop h6, black can block with the queen, and he is generally happy to enter an endgame. But instead of this, the move queen d6, which is suggestion by Ftashnik, is blocking these pieces here. He is not giving them a chance to come out. White is not giving them a chance to come out. And next, he wants to play bishop f6 and to occupy the dark squares. Also, one other idea is to block this queen, to exclude it, and to deliver the checkmate on the dark squares. b5 is a very powerful threat as well. One possible line runs b6, to which white is going to play b5. I just want to demonstrate you the ideas. By the way, here with the move b6, black wanted to save himself in case of bishop h6 to play something like bishop a6 and to return the extra material and to try to survive this way. This is a typical defensive method. We are grabbing material to try and to give it back in the proper moment for the active pieces of the opponent so that we can somehow decrease the energy that he has in the attack. But white here is not forced to do that. He doesn't want the material. He wants to keep the pieces in a bind, and after that, to go bishop h6 only. The difference is that after bishop b7, now he has the move knight to e5. When queen to f6 followed by queen to g7 checkmate is an unstoppable threat. Just have a look here. White is attacking with these two, and this knight, three pieces, and black has no defenders, basically. The queen has been excluded. Before that, the queen was somehow 
holding the situation together, but not anymore. If f6, there'll be queen e7. And again, checkmate. These three, they're dealing here. Okay, the rook is a defender, but it cannot go to f7 because the queen takes f7 simply. On move number 15, if they try to defend with a move like d6, this was probably the less evil, but then rook takes d6. Queen takes e2 would be answered. Bishop to h6. When once again white has very powerful attack on the dark squares with two possible lines. If the rook comes on e8, this is losing on the spot because of queen c3. Again, white is healing where it hurts the dark squares. And if black tries to block this with a move like knight e5, we just take it many times. Because if black takes in return, there'll be the same old back rank checkmate that we have seen before. If he doesn't take, if he tries to be tricky, and if he opens the file for his rook to defend the back rank, then the simplest is to drop the knight back. Once again, threatening checkmate on g7, but also defending his own king, and not letting a chance to black to trade the queens. White is already attacking with material advantage, and he should be winning easily. It should be also noted that after the move queen to c3, black has no escape, as if he tries a move like f6, well, there would be another inclusion of attacking pieces. The bishop will come on f1, and after that on c4, and there is nothing that black can do to stop the checkmate on these diagonals and files. And once again, we have a very nice demonstration of what the more capable pieces are doing to the less capable and um, the pieces which don't have enough numbers, enough defensive potential. There we go. White is just winning, he has everything there. Rook f8 is unstoppable checkmate threat. And in this line, finally, after bishop h6, the best defense is probably to go bishop g4, but once again, after queen c3, white has huge attack on the weak and dark squares. Now, moving back to the move rook e8, which was played in the game, then white played again the move rook d6. Very important move for us. Why? These pieces are kept again out of the picture, they are not going to help the king, and white is increasing the number of the attacking pieces. He is also removing the queen away from the important defensive position, and then he occupies the diagonal for his bishop. His idea is very simple, queen g5, queen h6, and checkmate on the dark square. Or bishop back somewhere, followed by queen to c3 battery and checkmate on the dark squares. If you have Weak on the opponent's position, if there are weak squares, do always use them, either for direct threats like this here, or for outposts for your pieces from where you can attack the enemy position. Black is trying to treat those attacking pieces by playing the move rook e6, but white is very careful, and he does the move b5. The idea? Well, the idea is, uh, you will see in a moment, he wants to open more room for his other pieces to join the attack. If, for example, b6 now, he wants to take on e6, he is not only attacking the queen, but he is sometimes threatening to deliver checkmate. And then on queen to d1 check, Krasenkov gives as a winning line the move rook e1, which is indeed leading to huge advantage for white in the end game. He is going to have two light pieces for rook, but I think even better here would be to do knight to e1. To open up the bishop, the threat of a back rank checkmate is not giving time to black to capture on c5, and if he takes on e6, there would be the move queen to e3 and checkmate on the dark squares. Or capture on c6, but of course, more importantly, checkmate on the dark squares. Finally, after the move b6 on rook e6, if they recapture with the queen, there would be queen to c3. The knight is hanging on c6. And probably the best defense for them is nevertheless to keep it where it is, because if it moves, there will be the move knight g5 or knight to d4. Actually, knight to g5, even better, which is going to open this bishop and there will be double attack against the queen and the rook. So therefore, bishop b7 more or less forced, capture, capture, queen to a1, and white is going to continue very strong attack with material advantage now. Next, he wants to play queen to d1, queen d4, or queen to e1 and queen to e5, just to shift these two, to turn them around and to deliver checkmate on the dark squares. 
In this line, the last move was important, which would be two, trying to keep the queens on the board because white's plan is to attack, not to play an endgame. He might be better in the endgame sometimes, but uh, more important for him is to keep the queens and to deliver the checkmate, as long as this king on g8 is as weak as it is now. So after seeing all these lines, black decided not to suffer this way and he took on d6, to which queen takes d6 was the answer. And now the queen is coming even closer. If you didn't notice this, one of the last defenders, the rook on e8, has left the stage. And now black has all these useless pieces. The only real defender is the queen. But the queen alone is finding it harder and harder to survive. Probably the last chance for black was to go queen to e6 and to give up the knight, but at least to try and to somehow survive in the endgame. True, after bishop e5, white is going to have huge advantages. The two bishops are extremely strong in this endgame, and also this rook is dominated by the bishop on e5, but that was the way for him to do it. Because what he did in the game, queen to b5, led to a disaster. Now, have a look what the more pieces are doing to the lonely king on g8. Knight g5. One more piece is joining the attack. And one more is ready to join with bishop d5. The obvious threat is bishop to d5, which will happen in case of, let's say, b6, bishop d5, followed by actually bishop takes f7 is checkmate. And therefore, what black did here was to give a check himself and at least to keep this bishop pinned. Now, the bishop is not used in the attack, but these three are good enough to beat this one because the queen is busy with the bishop. And if b6, for example, here there will be queen d5. And again, queen takes f7 is unstoppable. Uh, while if the pawn comes on h6, trying to get rid of this knight and not to give time for white to attack on f7, white doesn't need this time to attack. There are other weaknesses that he can use. For example, the f8 square. All he needs to do is to just give support to the queen. Again, this rook is not defending f8, and this is the main reason why the queen makes it to that f8 square and finally delivers checkmate on one of the two dark squares g7 or f8. Finally, the game ended with queen e1, a desperate attempt to bring the queen back home on e8, but that's too late. Knight h7 anyway, give me checkmate on f8. We know what happens in case of king takes h7, there will be this checkmate again. Well, if queen e8, which was played in the game, then queen to f4, and the queen manages to reach the king via a different route. As I told you, if we have more weaknesses, you can use them, any of them. Knight e7, bishop c3, and black resigned, not wishing to see either the threat performed, or knight f6 performed, or finally, in case of knight to d5, a third threat performed queen to h6 and checkmate either here or from there. The dark squares were the culprit for black's defeat, but a more important thing was that these two, they never made it to the king's side. They never helped the black king. So remember the two important conditions for you to have successful peace attack against the opponent's king, which has castled. Short or long, it doesn't matter. First of all, weaknesses in the opponent's camp that you can use for your pieces. And uh, your pieces can be either attacking them directly or you can use them. You can use the squares that has been weakened to bring your pieces closer to the enemy king and to finally checkmate it. But the most important thing, the really most important thing is the number of the pieces that you're using in the attack should be larger than the number of the defenders. Thank you and see you next time.